Good morning. Happy Monday. Hope you had a good weekend. On Friday, I was saying that uh, you would know, but that I didn't when I was recording it, whether the Cubs had won or not. Uh, that's still true. They didn't actually even end up playing on Thursday night. And of course, the interesting or the uh, noticeable thing about my Friday morning devotion is that I said nothing about President Trump and the First Lady uh, Melania coming down with COVID. It was sort of all the news, uh, but it happened late Thursday night, well before I, or well after I recorded this. I'm reminded of James 4, 14, that says, we don't know what tomorrow brings. And we really don't. And so when I record these devotions, I really don't know what you're going to wake up to the next day. Um, I also realized when I looked at this uh, today that I had skipped a big part of Hebrews chapter 10, a really profound passage beginning with verse 23. So I want to back up to that. <clears throat> Hebrews 10, 23. Let us hold fast to the confession of our hope without wavering, for he who promises is faithful. And let us consider how to stimulate one another to love and good deeds, not forsaking our assembling together, as is the habit of some, but encouraging one another all the more as you see the day drawing near. So I love the whole idea of encouraging one another and holding on to hope. Uh, I've talked a little bit about the difference between hope and optimism, that hope is based in Christ and God and his promises, not trend lines of what's going on. Uh, encouraging others, encouraging one another to do good. We cannot grow weary of uh, serving and doing the right thing. Um, but then the, the focus here that I have been thinking perhaps uh, more about is uh, the verse 25, not forsaking our assembling together, as is the habit of some. So um, I've been thinking today about the, the New Testament canon because I'm about to record that history um, lesson. And it, I just am struck by the fact that we have this book. And uh, if you grew up as a Christian group going to church, the idea of a Bible isn't surprising to you. You sort of, it's always there. But where did it come from? At some point becomes a question that you haven't really thought of. If you come to faith later, the idea of a book that you're going to read and base your life around is a little odd. This old book, really? I'm going to, I'm going to start to study this really old book. Well, the same similar kind of thing about church. I'm going to go to church like every week. I'm going to go to this place. I'm going to hang out at this place every week, every week. It's a little odd, but that's part of the thrust. So let me back up. I want to take a couple days on this. Let me back up to just talk about what is the church. Um, so we, I talk about the fact that the church is a community. It's the people, right? It's not a building. There was no building for 300 years. The church is you. You are the church. The church is, has a corporate side to it. Uh, there's an institution, especially today, right? 501c3, and we've got finances, and we've got HR. We've got, there's corporate side of it. But principally, the church is a cause. Um, the, the new, it's not that the church has a mission. It's that God's mission has a church. It has, it has his people that have been called out. So, uh, this is Jesus' idea. He's the first one to use the word ecclesia. It's a Greek word for the people that have been called out. It was a philosophy term that had fallen out of use when Jesus sort of reaches back and takes it up and says, I'm going to build this. I'm going to build a church. And uh, the, it will prevail. It's going to win. I remember as a consultant when I found an old Wall Street Journal that was 10 or 15 years old. And I was, I was reading it. I was sort of interested uh, to see what the stories were, and I was shocked when I looked at the when I looked at the this you know what what the leading companies were 15 years earlier because so many of them had gone away, and then uh, when I think about the church, you know, for 2,000 years it has continued. Individual congregations rise and fall, but the church continues forward. And uh, Jesus started this. It's not perfect. It's a flawed institution. It's got you and me involved in it, so of course it's flawed. Uh, but it is an institution, when you look at the book of Acts, of people gathering together every week to pray, to encourage one another in fellowship, uh, to worship, uh, to, to engage in the sacraments of 
baptism and, and communion and to study the apostles' teaching. And um, this is something that we actually need. So we, during this COVID period, we're all thinking about what is the church? It's clear technology can deliver a whole lot of what sort of people think of as the church. It can deliver the sermons. We can do some music online that, um, if we record it right, can actually be powerful. But the church is also each other, and it's a matter of encouraging one another. And so uh, I'm not saying if you're not showing up at church right now, you've forsaken the church, the word that's used here. That's, that's abandoned. It's a much stronger term than that, much stronger term than just not showing up. But I do want to say, while we can deliver a lot of things online, there's nothing like being together, and I think that's part of what's going on here. We'll pick this up tomorrow. Have a good day.